So what's the magic recipe then? How, how do you get away with drink driving? Um, there's, no, there's no magic recipe in every, I know it sounds like a very trite statement, every case is different. That's true. Um, like people get, 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 get hung up sometimes on the, on the um, I suppose the emotional aspects of it. And the emotional aspects come down to stuff like, um, guard said I was slurring my, slurring my words. I wasn't. Uh, or the guard said I was swerving on the road. That's not true. I wasn't swerving on the road. I hear this, these things a lot. Um, well, if you're, going to, if you're going to try and argue or defend a case on th those points, you're likely going to lose. Because that's a simple argument uh, for a judge to come down on. So she was slurring her words. I wasn't. She was swerving on the road. I wasn't. Judge, that's easy. You were drinking. He wasn't. I'm, I'm going to take his word. Okay, I'm sorry, but he wasn't drinking. So that's a that's a useless argument to to, uh, to to run, and you can run it, but it's pointless. It just makes it's a very easy decision for a judge to make. I'm going to side with the person who wasn't drinking. We all would probably, but the usually what you have to focus on is the law. Either the law was followed or it wasn't followed. People sometimes uh, will often think, "Well, I was over the limit, so therefore that's it." Well, no, it's not. Um, you know the, the the statistics that the. the court service released a couple of years ago were that about 66, 67% of people who were prosecuted for drink driving were convicted. But that just meant there was 33 or 34% uh, who weren't. And every one of them were over the limit. Like everyone was, you, you kind of have to be. You kind of have to be over the limit to be in court in the first place. But there was about roughly a third then. I'm sure it's less now, uh, but it's not, a, it's not a, a foregone conclusion. It's the law. Either the law was followed or the law wasn't followed. It's as simple as that. Um, and there's uh, any number of different ones. Uh, for the case that we, we ran recently, where the uh, lady was charged with not giving a specimen of, of uh, urine. Uh, she, or she had failed or refused. She had given some, but they said it wasn't enough. Well, it turns out it was enough, and the, the medical bureau could have tested on what she had given. The guards kind of threw it away and accused her of not, uh, um, well, actually the doctor said uh, she hadn't given enough. Um, so that's one area. It's an unusual one. It doesn't happen very often. That would rarely happen. But that was, that was one, one case where it did happen. Um, you know, there are certain things that have to be proven. You, 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 if you're going to be arrested for uh, drink driving or even drug driving, the evidence has to has to stack up. So we had a case that was, the guy was the someone said he you know the offence had happened at point A, and uh, the guard in the witness box said that they arrested him at point B. So there was a completely different location. That was a technical ground that it was struck out on. Uh, we had a, a drug driving case where the, the, in drug driving you're supposed to. The, 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 the item that the machine that they were using to test people re recommended, the instruction manual recommended that it, you should wait 10 minutes before you test them just to make sure that uh, they had nothing to eat or drink or smoke because if they had eaten or drank or smoked anything in the previous 10 minutes, it could skew the result. So that the instruction manual was saying, wait 10 minutes. And a lot of guys were not waiting 10 minutes, just testing straight away. And sometimes that, you know, the, the non-waiting of 10 minutes was an argument that the judge would accept and, and dismiss the, the case. Sometimes they wouldn't. But we had one where the guard had seen a guy uh, in traffic and saw him smoking what he believed to be a joint and went over to him straight away and tested him and he was found to be over the limit. In that case, he knew he was uh, consuming something. You know, sometimes like, you know, they, they might say, well, I didn't know he had consumed coffee or smoked two minutes ago, but in this case, he could see him smoking. It was clear. Uh, another one I heard recently was a colleague of mine was telling me that uh, there was a checkpoint, there was a drug driving test was gonna be done. Uh, the guard didn't have the device with him, so the guard said to the, to the motorist, well, you gotta hang on here now um, while uh, I get one of my colleagues to bring the device. And you, by the way, you can be kept here for up to an hour um, legally. And uh, person said, well, that's okay. Um, do you mind if I go to Starbucks? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a coffee. And the guy was fine about it, yeah, okay. Went to Starbucks, came back with a coffee, 
uh, came back with three coffees and had the receipt and was drinking the coffee uh, in the two or three minutes before the test was done. And so they, the argument was, well, you hadn't left that 10 minute gap to make sure that the, the, the coffee or anything else wouldn't interfere with the test. And the judge accepted that because that was seen as, as, a, as a kind of a, a flagrant breach. You knew full well that, they were, uh, that you should have given them 10 minutes and you knew they were drinking coffee in that 10 minutes because you authorized them to go off and get a cup of, cup of, cup of coffee. So it's stuff like that. Uh, that's becoming less an issue now because there's a new, de new device being brought in, but there's any number of different ways. Um, uh, but it, they are all tough. They're all tough. They, 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 these cases are like, um, they're like onions. You've got to peel away and peel away and peel away and peel and keep peeling away the, at the problem. And if you peel, I mean, in, I think generally speaking, if you kind of keep looking at a problem and, and looking at it and peeling it away, you kind of get down to the core issue uh, after a while. Superficially, it's always tough but you get down to the core issue after a while. A, 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 prim, a primary case is um, a colleague of mine told me about a drink driving case where a solicitor was arrested for drink driving and um, brought to the station, uh, was drunk, was brought to a city centre station and he was going to give a breath test and um, the breath test, uh, he has to be observed for 20 minutes before he gives the breath test so that, you know, any residual alcohol will clear the mouth and not skew the test. So in those cases where you're going to give a breath test, you have to be observed for 20 minutes. Okay, you have to make, and they have to observe you to make sure you're not eating or drinking or smoking in that period before you give the test. So, you know, the guard in the witness box said that he observed this particular guy for 20 minutes and uh, he, he gave that evidence and the defense had secured the CCTV from within the station. The CCTV showed he was not being observed and the case was dismissed. So. Now, I'm sure in that case, the guard thought he was looking after him or someone else was staring at him or whatever it was, but that's it. Um, and so the, the, if you're, if you're going to throw people off the road, you've got to be sure you've done it right. Now, guards are well trained and mistakes happen. I make mistakes every day of the week, so uh, these things do happen. But that's an area. Um, you know, um, drink driving has, has got so many different component elements and so many areas or so many of the cases are, are different. A lot of them are the same, but there's lots of different steps uh, along the way in these cases.